And normally you define the availability of the steel by calculating the carbon equivalent of the steel. And high alloying content in the steel, like carbon, copper, nickel, molybdenum, uh, it decreases the availability of the steel. So steels with high carbon equivalent values normally requires welding at elevated temperatures in order to avoid hydrogen cracking in the heat affected zone or in the weld metal during the welding operation. An elevated working temperature uh, increases the ability for the hydrogen to diffuse in the weld joint and there, there, thereby also reduce the risk for hydrogen cracking. It's extremely important also to choose the right filler material and well, met, uh, well method combinations in order to minimize the hydrogen supplied by the weld process to the, the weld pool. For instance, for hard ox weld logs and Domex advanced high strength steels, we do recommend to use filler materials that supply a hydrogen content of 5 ml per 100 gram weld metal. And weld methods and filler materials that comply to these requirements are, for instance, mag welding with solid wires. You can also use mag welding with most of the flux cord wires. You can use stick electrode welding with basic powder. You can use submerged arc welding with basic powder and also TIG welding. So in order to make sure that uh, we fulfill, fulfill the demand 5 ml per 100 gram weld metal, it's extremely important that we store and handle the filler material according to the filler material producer's recommendations. So where can you find the information about how the preheating process is performed? As I say, we have handbooks that describes exactly how you perform the preheating process. You can also download brochures from SSAB's website, which describes exactly how you perform the preheating process. You can, for instance, use electrical mats. Uh, the, the benefit by using electrical mats is that the, the heating process is distributed even in the plates. Uh, you can also use an oxy-fuel flame in order to preheat the plates before the actual welding operation. Another very important part is that uh, it's not only the joint, you need also to preheat the surroundings around the joint. And we normally have a requirement that the preheating uh, temperature should be reached within 75 millimeters from the actual joint. And also uh, for thicker plates, you need to, to wait a certain time in, before the actual uh, measure the preheating temperature. And we have a requirement or a recommendation to wait two minutes per 25 millimeter thickness of the plate.